Today, I am embarking on the single most important cosplay costume making journey of my entire life. Everything has been leading up to this moment, and that is making Shania Twain's iconic leopard outfit from the Adapt on a Pressing Much music video. She has been my absolute favorite for my entire life, and this is the most important thing that I have ever done, you guys. With all that being said, there's a reason that I'm doing this. I'm finally going to see her in concert, and let me just tell you, she happens to be bringing out old costumes from the vault, and guess what one of those old costumes is? It's the leopard outfit! I get to see it on stage, on the real Shania, in real life, at the concert. No pressure, but the concert is in a week. And I have full confidence in my chaotic tunnel vision that we can get this done, and we can get it done pretty good. All right, let's cut some fabric. Okay, let's talk fabric. So, this is the fabric that I've ordered. I'm gonna sit over here so I can show you me unboxing it. I spent so much time trying to find the exact right fabric, and this is the absolute closest that I could get. I ended up ordering 10 yards of this fabric, and I'm hoping that that's gonna be enough. It's a velvet with a printed leopard print on it. The big thing for me, which you can see as I unwrap it here, is that it's not a repeating pattern. Like, it's randomized enough that when it's put together, so that it doesn't look like stripes of darker browns and lighter browns or oranges or whatever. It's perfect. I love it. With that said, we're gonna start with the easiest thing, which is making the little sports bra. I also can't believe I'm going to wear a bra to shirt in public, but Janai did it, so I'm gonna be brave. We're going to be using this sports bra to make the little bralette portion. I'm just gonna trace it over with muslin fabric. So that's the bralette plan. So here's my little pattern I made. It's going to be the same in the front as it is in the back. So I'm just cutting out four pieces of each because it's just gonna be lined with the same fabric. As you can see here, I'm putting two pieces together and I'm going to be sewing them along the outsides of along the lines of these pins and then un inside outing it and sewing those two halves together. And thank God Shania is wearing this on the tour because she posted this picture on Instagram and I can finally see a very crisp and close look at what all these sequins and beads look like. So we're gonna be doing that to our top as well. In a perfect world, I would have had more variety in the color of reds and more like dark deep tones and burgundies, but this is what I had and I had a week to make this. So this is what we got. Okay, and now we're moving on to the iconic wide leg, low waisted pants. The more I look at Shania's pants, I don't see a seam in the front at all. My leggings have a seam here. Hers does not have that. I, I'm i like worried about the butt crack situation if I just do two like tootie pants drawings and sew them together. I'm afraid that it's not gonna fit my butt correctly. What I'm gonna do is use this wide leg pants pattern, mishmash mosh it together with this leggings pattern because I want to make sure that I have the right crotch situation because that is not a focal point, but it's very noticeable on the outfit to me. The plan is to do like a regular butt crack situation in the back, two panels sewn together in the butt crack. I'm saying butt crack a lot. And then for the front, I'm gonna do that modification situation where it's just flat in the front, but I'll just put a gusset in if I need to. I don't want to, but that's not an emergency. I had to do that in another costume that I made because the crotch wasn't fitting correctly. So when in doubt, insert a gusset for pants. I really had like an unreasonable concern for the butt crack crotch situation, so thanks for hanging on for that. But here I am cutting out the front panels. I'm using both pieces of the different patterns I'm using. So you can see that bottom piece is from the leggings pattern I'm using, and then the piece that I put on top is from the wide leg pants pattern, and I'm just making them like just way too big and it was an issue. So just cut it to your size. I never do that, but that's just me. Here I am pinning the back two pieces of the pants together and I'm just going to sew along the lines that I pinned. After I did that, I realized, yes, I absolutely do need a gusset for these pants. So I real quick cut that out and here is me pinning that to the front of the pants, which I will then pin and sew onto the back of the pants. And then here I am testing out that crotch situation. So I don't have the size of the pants sewn together yet. So I'm just sort of making sure that the gusset fits. And then I put pins on the sides here where I want to have the side seam for the pants. So it's just sort of like held together by me holding it on right now. And you can see it's not sewn at all. 
And then for the rest of the pants process, I'm taking them in quite a bit and just pinning along where I want to have the seam down the sides and taking it in and taking it in and taking it in. As I keep trying them on and realizing that it's just, I just should have cut them to my size originally, but that's okay. Okay, and then once I have them fitting correctly, I'm going to be doing the waist rolling process. Her pants are very low waisted and I'm just not confident enough for that. I'm a high waisted girly, so I'm making these a little bit high waisted. And as for the waistline, it's velvet fabric, so you're gonna see a top stitch, so I was very careful not to do that. This is some sort of invisible stitch witchery and you can see the edge there i'm going to be sewing that down and hand stitching it and only grabbing like a very little bit from the top fabric that's going to be visible if that makes sense there's definitely tutorials out there that show you how to do this but this was like the bane of my existence until i figured it out so i ordered 10 yards of that fabric and you would think that's enough for this outfit but since the inside of the jacket like this part and this part and the back are all the same fabric like it's not lined with black fabric or anything turns out i was like six yards short and i was panicking because this fabric was from la the etsy seller was amazing and was able to get me another six yards sent out and it arrived while i was away at a convention this weekend and now we're good so let's get going on cutting this and hopefully i can make the jacket in the next four days because I leave on Thursday for the concert that's on Friday. <laughs> Let's keep going with this streak of good luck. Okay, and now for the pièce de résistance. Is that, was that correct pronunciation? Let's check. Pièce de résistance. Honestly, close enough. Let's make the jacket. Pattern for the jacket. So I have two patterns that are sort of Frankenstein's together. This is the pattern that I'm modifying that I found on Etsy. You can find it here. However, since I couldn't find a pattern that had the exact shapes I wanted, I'm going to have to modify it to get it to look how I want to, which is fine. I always do that. And I like to have a pattern to start as a base because I don't know what shape a jacket should be when it's all deconstructed. So I need something to go off of. Fast forward to when I actually figure that out. This is what it looks like. <laughs> Oh, yep, and that was me singing while I was making this jacket. Of course, I was listening to Shania the whole time because that's the vibes. And I plan to be her number one listener on Spotify this year. Okay, bye. And then back to the Frankensteining of this jacket pattern. The tissue piece is the jacket pattern that I showed you before. That's the one that I'm starting with. And then I just took this, which is actually two pieces of my Barbie vest because I wanted to get a correct armpit hole. And like I said, I wanted the whole front piece to be one piece instead of two pieces because of the way the, the hood is. I don't think it has a seam line on it. Uh, so that's the plan. And then we just snip, snip, snip like 10 yards of fabric to make this jacket. I also made it have a train, which once I got to the concert may have been a bad idea because I was carrying it around like a long tail all night so people wouldn't trip over it, but it was worth it because it gives drama. So then after I had all of those pieces cut out, I'm basically just making two jackets separately and then sewing them together. So that is this process here. Then after sewing my two halves together, this is what I have and I have to un-inside out it. So basically I left the armholes open, which you can see I'm gonna stick my hands through right now. And I'm gonna un-inside out the whole thing and then I just need to put some sleeves on. The sleeves are the only thing that is not going to be double lined because that's the only thing that you can't see the backside from. So no need to do that. Then her sleeves are just a tight, regular sleeve. I'm playing it fast and loose. I'm using like this cap sleeve pattern that I have, and then I'm just gonna be cutting basically a rectangle down the side and fitting it to my arm that way. Last but not least, our final step is to accessorize with the necklace. So her choker basically creates like a tortoise shell pattern using red, orange, yellow, and brown beads. So I spent an exorbitant amount of money on these beads at Michael's obviously with the coupon, but I was on a timeline, so I probably could have paid less for them. That's not the point. Anyways, I'm just going to be creating like seven layers and mismatching all of these different beads just to create a pattern. You can see the ones that I have here so far and just sort of going random because hers is random and it looks good. And once we finish the necklace, it's time for the reveal. The outfit is complete.
the lighting is really bad. We're just conserving batteries, so this is all we're gonna say. We had tickets like way back there, and then we hopped on Stub Hop and we were like, and now we're way right here. And then so basically the concert started happening and moving to the pit was the best financial decision that I've ever made because I was this close. Like this was what I was actually seeing with my actual eyes. The real Shania Twain. And then of course she brought the leopard outfit to the concert and it just completed my whole life. We had a moment when she was, when she was wearing it and I was wearing it and I stood on a chair and the crowd was going wild. So guys, this is the lighting that we're working with. We just saw Shania Twain in concert. And Shania saw her <laughs> in my outfit. Okay, the whole story is we didn't do a lot of vlogging because our phones were on critical battery level the whole time. Um, but anyways, so we got there and we were supposed to sit in section 202 and then we were like, hmm, let's just like see what the pit tickets are like right now. And then they were like pretty good. So we also, we, we bought those. upgraded ourselves. We cause... bought those because we are taking destiny into our own hands. Yeah. Um, so we were like seven rows back in the pit in like the middle and it was just prime viewing. Um, she just was amazing. And so she was wearing one like fit the whole time that was like teal and leopard. And then she left and then her last two songs were that don't impress me much. And man, I feel like a woman and she came out and she was wearing this outfit and I Blocked out. I truly so remember the whole, the whole crowd um, started pointing. Everyone in the pit was pointing at pit her friends. for Shania to see her. And then and she I blacked saw out, <laughs> so she stood on a chair. And then Shania saw her and pointed at her and then continued on. But Shania saw her with her own damn she eyes. She saw me with her actual eyes and her actual head. Yeah. So it was the whole crowd was so satisfied in that moment. I know and it was just it was so fun that the entire pit was just like pointing at us because like they needed Shania I know. to see <laughs> that you guys were literally matching. My uh there were so many people like before the show started taking pictures with me and they were like, Oh my god, your outfit, your outfit, where did you get it? And I was like, I made it and then they were like, Oh my god. Um because And then they also really liked my hat. Yes Honorable but, mention you know, the giddy up hat which looks yeah. I'll insert a photo of what Shania looks like. I also made hat. this. I DIY am not keys. a cosplayer but but it's I can it's, be doing some crafts. It's like um it's like an entryway to cosplay. Guys look at all the it's a nugget of cosplay. Oh, don't look at my hair but like Look at it. This is all of our instants. Uh, we don't have a tripod. We're just in the car yeah, waiting. We'll just be in the car waiting. But it looks so good. I think best hat of the night, honestly. There were a lot of hats there, but there was no hat that stood. That said giddy that, up or that, like, it was like the pre-bought like Amazon rhinestone hats that weren't like this. Yeah, this is a um, do it yourself. <sighs> Anyways, um, my childhood dream is pretty much completed. Yeah. Um, There's nothing awesome. else to live for now. I gotta find something else. <laughs> Unless we go to the New York show and I know. Like, get on stage. Uh, that was awesome. We didn't vlog a lot, so this will be included in- This is pretty in... much gonna be the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then a lot of little videos. Yeah. What? Ah! Okay. Love you, Shania. Bye. I'm like a little critter right now, screaming around in my leopard outfit. I'm just a little hungry.